Ladies and gentlemen, lesson 31, which I know thanks to Evie, because Evie told me what lesson it was. So now we know. Now we're so much smarter. <laughs> we're that much smarter. Let us hop in. Today's topic is using um, some particles, using demo, using temo, uh, which is generally like attached to the te form, which can also like look like demo. So we'll talk about all these different things. And then we'll also talk about noni. So I'm hoping to be able to fit all this into an hour. Um, I don't want to really go for too long as usual. And the reason I wanted to talk about demo and temo and stuff like that is that um, I feel like demo especially has a few usages that are kind of um, hard to grasp because they they fall like outside a simple like, oh, um, a but kind of usage. <laughs> but, I'm sorry. Um, so that's what we're going to talk about today. Now, first of all, um, we're going to start with just kind of talk about simple demo and we're going to talk about um, demo with nouns first. So um, we're going to do the first thing we're going to talk about is what happens when we have noun demo. There's like a few possibilities with noun demo. OK, so we're going to go through um, all of those like different things. So first of all, I already kind of mentioned it, but um, there the like the main use that you'll see a lot is basically that it's kind of like a but. OK, it's a conjunction. So and remember, conjunctions are like words that help us like stick together like clauses, but um, in the case of a noun, actually, it's not even as conjunctive because remember, like a noun itself isn't really um, a noun itself isn't really a clause. But do me a huge favor. <laughs> do you want to tweet? I, I'm not going to tweet today. I forgot. But yeah, I'll retweet it. So with um, noun demo, it's mostly like a but. Um, however, the sort of the difference for like um, the straight up usage for English would be that um, with, with especially with nouns, it's not like super conjunctive because with the noun, you don't really have like a finished clause. So it doesn't really lead into another clause. Right. All right. Let's go. Let's do this. <laughs> Y'all. Sorry. I I just can I wanted to make um, another trailer, but I just kind of couldn't find the time and motivation to do it today. And that's why I felt like I wouldn't want to tweet. Hey, first time catching on. Thanks for doing these lessons. Oh, you're welcome, Sorks. Don't worry about it. So what's now on demo? Okay, so um, once again, it's probably easiest if we look at some example. Mm, where do we have a nice one? Ah, oh, there. That's a, that's a good one. So, ah, okay. Uh, oh, well, maybe actually we should use the first, we should start with, um, okay, let's do, let's actually, <laughs> sorry, thanks for the Twitch Prime. Don't have time permission code to tweet, yes. Arigato! I appreciate that. Let's start with something else, actually, but rather than noun demo, let's, um, let's kind of think about what demo is, like, at the start of a sentence, so just, like, Demo, if you see it at the start of a sentence, generally just really does mean but. And it is kind of just like, at that point, just like a straight up conjunction. So, for example, um, you could have something like kyo. Um, kyo wa. Kyo wa isogashi, right? Um, you have something like, yeah, kyo wa isogashi, which is like this. Um, but you have, right, that guy. Full stop. Demo. I'll make this red. Demo. 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 Uh, wait. Hotkey things. Lack of hiragana in my chat. Distressing. Like, if we want more hiragana, feel free. Demo. Ashita wa. And so, ashita would be like this. Ashita wa. Hima. So, I'll, I'll probably do like um, hima in. Hiragana, because the kanji is kind of annoying. <sighs> I don't know why, I just don't like doing he. <laughs> he is not a kanji I like doing. I always feel like I'm doing it awkwardly. So here, it's fairly straightforward. It's just kind of like a but. I'm pretty sure that um, in English class, a lot of us have been tol told not to start a sentence with but, um, at least in like essay writing. 
As far as I know, no such rule exists with demo in Japanese. It is perfectly fine to start a sentence with demo if it is a contrast towards the last sentence. So uh, maybe I'll provide you with some fancy uh, furigana so that you can better read this. So this is kyo. I feel like my um, kyo today uh, isogashi. Isoga. Sogashi and Ashita. Okay. Um, but it was a lie. <laughs> yes, threw me off at first. Yeah. So um, I'm pretty sure, and you can you can now take my word for it, and I'm I'm fairly confident in this. It's fine to start a sentence with demo in Japanese. You see it all the time. So what is a but? A but is sort of like we we kind of know what we're like, but how but functions. But functionally in Japanese, also this demo is simply a contrast or a um, like a clarification or like a, a thing that stands opposed to the last sentence. So simply here, kyo wa isogashi, I am busy today, demo ashita wa hima, but I'm free tomorrow, right? So you're you're saying something that kind of then goes against the flow of the first sentence. Uh, but you can start for however from that's okay. Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? So that's like the standard, that's the use of demo that you'll see a lot. When it stands at the start of a sentence, you can almost always think of it simply as a but, simply as a sentence being introduced that goes like anti the previous sentence. And since he'll talk about nouns, uses an adjective. Uh, I said that um, we'll start with at the start of a sentence and then we'll talk about nouns later and we'll talk about other things later. It's like you're continuing the previous sentence. In a sort, yes. I feel like that's a hard question to answer because you're you're kind of always continuing the previous sentence when when you have like coherent conversations, right? Like it's it's all ties together in a way. Um, but you would almost always I'm pretty sure you would always have like a full stop here. Like you would not usually have demo right after an e adjective, but then this also becomes a blurred line because in spoken language, how would you tell if I have a full stop there or not? It's just kind of a small pause. Right, I feel I feel like the concept of a sentence can be pretty loose, especially in spoken language. Um, I'm telling you, I'm connecting them to be honest. Yeah, like it's certainly like when you when you start a sentence with demo, it's heavily connected to the previous one, of course, um, because it needs like it needs to contrast something. If there's nothing here, then the the demo part doesn't make sense. Though this can also be an implied thing, I suppose. The new trend maybe just catering to me. Um, the use of commas can depend on like personal preference and also they are loosely used to just make things more legible. So sometimes using commas can really help with... Um, sometimes commas can really help with understanding a sentence, especially in Japanese where there is no spaces whatsoever. Um, there are actually no comma rules in Japanese because the comma is kind of a foreign concept that was just kind of yanked from English and taken. So the rules there are very loose, basically non-existent. You can put a comma wherever. Usually the way they're used is to sort of indicate to the reader that they're supposed to do a little pause or that these things are kind of split apart. It kind of depends. So your teacher isn't wrong in using a lot of commas, but they're probably in a way are trying to make it easier for you to read stuff. Let's talk about another use of demo. Or before we do that, let's let's talk about demo in contrast with a bunch of other buts. Haha, <laughs> today we're talking a lot about buts. If you're a butt person, you'll like this one. Um doo -doo -doo -doo. Okay. Okay. So we have some other options. So how does demo compare to other um buts? I'm a I'm a demo, <laughs> nice. Um, we have stuff like, I'll just write like most of them down. We have like, uh, keredomo. Kere, keredomo is pretty formal. So I'll, I'll kind of talk about how all of these are sort of different. We have keredomo, we have, uh, kedo. Kedo comes to mind. We have, um, ga. Wow, that's an ugly ga. That's better. We have ga. We have, um, shikashi. Shikashi. Okay, well, Mr. I think I'm. Well, there's Shikashi Nagara, but like, Keredomo and 
uh, Kedo are very similar, and then uh, Shikashi and Shikashi Nagara, Nagara are very similar as well. So I'll, I'll leave that here now. So these are the ones that you'll mostly see. Now the big difference between these two, this group here, sorry, the big difference between this group here and Demo is that these on the right side generally connect sentences direct, or not sentences, sorry, they, they connect clauses directly. Um, so they can be, all of these can be attached um, immediately after like a noun or a predicate. Um, so actually maybe except for Skashi, I think Skashi would be the exception to that. Um, yeah, Skashi is the exception to that. But these, um, these ones here, you can all, uh, these are all like straight up conjunctions. So I'll do like conjunctive. So you can connect the clause right away with um, Keredo, Kedo, um, or Keredomo, uh, Ga. Those are all like work. You can pluck those immediately after a, a verb or a predicate. Uh, Mr. Okuro, uh, thank you for the follow. Foro, arigatou gozaimasu. Skin start partner, such as what? Well. Yeah. So. That's like the main difference. And then Shikashi versus Demo is that I would say that like, you can think that like, you could say that um, Demo is a lot more casual. So you might see Shikashi a lot more in written texts and then Demo a lot more in spoken language. But they are very similar. Um, Shikashi would you be used very similarly to Demo um, uh, in like the start of a sentence, just as sort of a, a but. Like, she's just doing like a contrast to the last sentence. However, demo has a lot of usages. Yeah, you could think that shikashi means however. But then I I find it hard to give a really tangible explanation of the difference between but and however. Um, but you could probably think of it like that. They're very similar. However, demo has a bunch of usages that we're going to talk about today that do not apply to shikashi. So when you start a sentence with demo or shikashi, they're very similar. But again, like shikashi can be a little bit more formal. Um, uh, but demo also has usages that do not at all overlap with shikashi, and we will talk about those. Okay, I'm not going to talk much further about these lads over here, but that's just sort of to give you an idea of how these all can act differently. Also, all I told you about kere domo, kedo, and ga is that they act conjunctively as but structures. That sounds so weird. Um, but I don't really want to go too deep into those because we can do that another time. Because it would kind of like, there's already so much to talk about, just the demo, and then especially once we get into demo as well. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about some other usages. Um, yeah, Kedo has other usages as well. They don't fully overlap, obviously. Um, one big one, yeah, that's what I said. Uh, Kedo can act fully conjunctively. It can be appended after a predicate to continue the sentence into a next clause. What about Tada? Uh, tada is more like only, like when you're saying it's just that or something like that. Okay, let's talk about um, a, another usages, uh, not, another usage of um, demo that I really want to mention. So these are all, I, ha I have a bunch of um, example sentences here, but these are mostly for that. There we go. This is a good one, okay? Demo. Okay, one big thing that demo does that people get confused by is demo can be kind of like um, like making a group more vague, like more um, more varied, sort of like um, it's this demo after a noun. Okay, often the way it works is demo after a noun can kind of have this and so on uh, and so on or um, what do they say here? I'm trying to see something like yeah something like kind of I'll show you an example something like okay that's kind of a very common usage of demo that often confuses people because they think demo always means but but <laughs> I it's funny to me how often I use the word but just to explain all this um, it really doesn't because here you'll have something like um, like the classical one is when someone says um, I feel like the real classic is like ocha demo nomimasen ka mitaina. So um, ocha, uh, I think ocha has the flower thing, and then it's um, it was again right. It's simply that. Cool. Ocha demo, and then you would do like. Um, 
飲みませんか Um, right. Like this guy. No, me, ma. Sen, ka? Ocha demo, no, me, ma, sen, ka? What's the big difference between demo and toka in that sense? So, I feel like the big difference here. Is that demo is primarily used in these situations to make suggestions, but not to like force something on someone.、Um, the difference between ocha no mimasenka is it feels a lot more direct, and often directness is sort of the thing that is avoided when you're trying to be really polite. And when you say ocha toka, it ocha toka almost sounds kind of vague, like you don't even really. Know which one it is, but but also sounds kind of like、um, weirdly informal in a way to me.、Um, I feel like the main thing is that this demo is specifically often used to give a suggestion to sort of say, like, hey, how about that? Like, why, like, would this be okay? Is when you when you do like suggestions, and the funny thing is that you can do suggestions to other people, but also to yourself. So, like, people say, like,、um, when they are considering things, they're like, maybe.、Um, Maybe I should go take a walk. So, like, I、yeah, know that's not a good example, but like when you, especially with nouns, it works well. With actions, it doesn't work as well, but with nouns, it works a lot better. So, for example, maybe、um, I should eat some cake. Like, keiki demo tabeoka. Keiki demo tabeoka. It's like you're making a suggestion to yourself.、Um, this one is hard to. Yeah, so that, that's why I'm trying to like introduce it a little bit because this is the one that I feel. People get confused about the most. By the way, is de here working as the conjunctive form of a copula? Yeah, maybe.、Uh, it's. I don't know if I would ever think of it like that. I, um. Uh, demo is a bit weird. Like, it's much easier to always just think of demo as one particle rather than thinking of a de plus mo because that just makes everything more complicated. There's sometimes cases where dissecting things. Um, how does demo work differently here than just mo? Well, mo would just be inclusive. So that would like, ocha mo no mi masen ka? Would you also like to drink tea? That sounds like you're already drinking something else, right?、Um, I feel like might as well go full tane and go and use ikaga desu ka?、Um, yes, ocha wa ikaga. Yeah, then you're just saying, like, how about this? Yeah, that's. That's good as well, but demo is used a lot like this. Especially, like, again, you're, you, if you're talking to yourself, you wouldn't be like polite, but you would be like, you know, just a little text summary PDF things after lesson.、Um, did you stop making? For now, I did. It's been.、Um, the thing is that the summaries take like quite a lot of work, and I'm like really behind right now. I might get back to it at some point. It's just a matter of like finding time to do it, and I'm. Thinking that maybe I should focus my work on other stuff, like maybe trying to get like YouTube videos going again and stuff like that. I would love to make them.、Um, it's just like sometimes it's hard for me to sit down, like for because it usually it takes me like three to four hours for one of them. It's just kind of a lot of work. I, I, I kind of I like them. I would love to do them. Maybe I'll get back to it eventually. I'm sort of weird with that, like trying to get stuff done. Sometimes I just do everything in a bulk and then I stop doing it and then I have to like really find that moment again. Um, something like, do you want something like tea? Yeah, like again, the way I explain it is often, it's often it kind of works like a how about, how about, like how about some tea, like how about some tea, how about, how would you like some tea?、Uh, might be good enough. You could also interest someone else easily. Yeah, but I, I would feel so bad for not actually. Um, he's kind of doing something like that. Like if if you want Evie, you can share that stuff on the Discord if you want to. Like I know、um, Evie often like writes along. That's fine by me.、Um, but I would never like actually ask someone to do it and and like not pay them for it. That would just feel like horrible.、Um, or that would feel like I don't know. It's like so much. I, I would feel bad. Okay.、Um, then we have some other examples. This one I will just copy. I will use、um, the text tool a little bit more. Writing along. Yeah, if you're okay with it, then、um, I don't see a, I don't see an, like I don't see a problem with you sharing it on on the Discord server. I think that'd be cool. Let's do this font. Wait, that's not the font that I like. I like this font. This font's cool. Yeah, this font's cool. I like this. I don't know why, but for some reason, Photoshop is just. Such a laggy piece of software, and I don't understand why it is. 
Like, there's no reason why it should be, but it still is. It manages to be absolute trash sometimes. Uh, I don't mind as long keep talking about the topics you're introducing. Yep. Had to move stuff. Yep, I'm sorry. I... Why is this not working? Ah, uh, yeah. Okay, we're gonna... Konnichiwa, Ryuryu-chan. Eh-chan, gomenazai, tsui. Ryuryu-san. Why is... <laughs> okay. I'm gonna have to... I'm gonna have to delete this and do it again. It's a piece of something else. I... I really just want this text to... Why? <laughs> You're really trying to trigger me now, aren't you, Photoshop? Why can I not make this the size I want it to be? <sighs> okay. Why is it... Why does it lock to... I... Did I press some button? Am I in caps lock or something? What's going on? What is this thing? Why can I not make text size? Why can I not make text bubbles at any size? What? what? Ah! Okay, I'm gonna have to write it by hand because Photoshop literally won't let me put text right now because I don't know why. Okay. Um, I'll do this then. Do I have always on top maker? I hope I do. Let me just see real quick. Okay, there. It's still around. I hope this works. Please. Let's see. Please work. Yes, it works. All right, cool. Now we can work. Um, okay, I'm sorry for the delay. I just wanted to copy some text, but alas. I, <laughs> I don't know why. The text tool is just not really working for me right now. I'm not a Photoshop wizard. I really just use it for what I need to use it for, and the rest I have no idea. Okay, so tsugi no, I will do tsugi no shumatsu. So shumatsu, shumatsu, tsugi no shumatsu. Here's a comma. We don't really need this comma, but yeah. Um. Kyoto. Um, ni demo. So this is an example of using another particle combined with demo, but it's the same usage. Ni demo. Um, I'll make a new line for the ikanai. Often you'll have this sort of negative suggestion form. Demo ikanai. By the way, do you always write more starting with the horizontal strokes and then she? I do, yeah. Is that not how you're supposed to write it? That's what I'm used to, but maybe... Am I wrong? I don't know. I don't think I've ever seen it like this, but maybe I'm just wrong. But yeah, this is always how I've written it. Um, but I can't tell you if it's actually correct. Ironically, I'm more strict with kanji stroke order than I am with hiragana stroke order. <laughs> um, blah, 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 blah. Okay, I'm, I'm just not gonna engage too much with these really long messages, maybe. Or, or should I? I'm not sure. Oh, sound less judgment. Mm. Okay. Uh, let's move on. Tsugi no shumatsu. So this is next weekend. Kyoto ni demo. So here you can just see how we have ni just kind of used with iku, right? Ni iku to go somewhere. But then we add demo sort of to have this sort of suggestion thing, right? Like how about like why don't we go why don't we go to Kyoto or something? Right? Like why don't we go to Kyoto? How about we go to Kyoto? It's very often sort of this like, how about you just make like a suggestion, right? Just trying to put a suggestion out there. It's kind of how you would use that kind of demo. Alright. Ba ba ba. Okay. Let's see she first and hiragana and katakana. It's how you write. Interesting. I didn't even know. Yeah, I don't know. It just felt like um, supernatural. Supernatural. It felt really natural to me to do it that way. Kyokis, thanks for the follow. Photo. Arigato. Do we have? I'll I'll maybe look it up later. Um. Okay. Let's talk about yet another usage that you'll see, which practically or or uh, nice enough. It also is just a noun and a demo, and it's used for like even. Okay. Uh, not red. White is good. Even. Okay, even. This is sort of saying when you have like, um, you want to put real emphasis on um, like one specific as aspect. You want to like really um, 
emphasize one thing. You were saying like, well, but at the end, like something like, you know, um, what do we have here? This is such a long example sentence. Oh yeah, like for example, um, all these example sentences are nice, but they're not like nice for. This is good one for emo. Well, how should we say? Maybe something like um, kodomo demo. Eto kodomo no yu koto demo chanto kita hoga i mitai na. So like even the things that children say, kodomo no yu koto, like things that children say. Um, kodomo no yu koto demo chanto kita hoga i. Even the things that children say, you should listen to them properly, right? So you're saying like you you want to really like take this one thing and say like well even that like you should still do this other thing, kind of like that. And then other examples. Um, this one is also not super long. Yuka Choko, thanks for the follow. Follow, arigatou gozaimasu. Um, and Ebony's Green, thanks for the follow as well. Welcome everyone. Um, this is another sentence that I can show you real quick because um, it works as well. It just uh, doesn't fit the even just quite as much. So this is um, Shukudai. 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 Wa, which is homework. Shukudai wa. I'll pretty honest this because it's maybe not like. I hope it's a word you recognize because you probably are doing homework. I don't know. Shukudai. Shukudai wa ashita demo ii or oh this is asatte. I'll use ashita. I don't. Know. I'll I'll save myself one kanji and write ashita instead of asatte. <laughs> asatte means the day after tomorrow, but we'll just go with ashita demo. Ashita demo. Um, いいですか Okay. 宿題は明日でもいいですか So, is it okay if I do the homework tomorrow? Right? So, like, 明日でも it's, it's sort of like saying it's like, um, like, even if I do it tomorrow, would that still be okay? Like, even if it is tomorrow, is that still いい Is that still good? Kind of like that. So you can, with this demo i desu ka is a very common thing as well. And we'll actually see that again when we talk about like temo i and demo i as sort of like additives to the te form.、Um, you'll see this again for like asking if something is okay.、Um, so especially with i being like good. So it's basically like saying even if this part, right? It's kind of even if this, is it this? That's a que- here's the question, right? But it doesn't have to be a question. It can also be an affirmative statement.、It、just says like even if A, B, kind of like that, right? So even if tomorrow, is it good, right? Is it okay if I do it tomorrow? So you'll see this again with like、um, like temoi and stuff like that.、Um, as the day is just conjunctive even in demo. Well, it's a bit weird. It probably is.、Um, like it, it probably is. Yeah, it's probably just. Sort of like doing because I mean it's the, it's the general pattern, right? We have a noun or an adjective, and then we do demo. So like there must be probably some sort of there. There's usually when that happens, when you have something right after a noun like that,、um, and it leads into another particle. Often it can be kind of copulaic in many different ways, and they is the te form of of da. So it is it is kind of like a copul copula, and I think that's that is what it comes from. But I just don't know if it helps to think of it like that. Um, in this case, sometimes breaking these things down as much as you can can help. But in this case, I just don't think it really helps that much.、Um, but yeah, I mean, it 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 work. It's kind of like that because, especially when you compare it to like te form plus mo, then you're like, oh well. So if it's verb te form plus mo and has that usage, then demo is probably just the te form of the copula and the mo.、Um, does it go beyond that meaning too much sometimes? I. I would which demo to use? Is it based on context? Yeah, it's based on context. You have just have to know. But also, they are kind of similar in a way. Like especially in this sentence, I feel you could argue like、e- either way. You could say like this is kind of like making a suggestion and bringing up an option, and it's also kind of like saying even though or even. So, it it's kind of like in Japanese, these two things are just like very similar. Like as a concept that they use the same word because they. I, I'm pretty sure, like from a Japanese point of view, you kind of think of this as the same. It's just kind of a, a slight nuance that is like different depending on the situation. But in English, we have to like use fairly different words to do that. Whereas in Japanese, demo just kind of fills both slots. So, 
Um, again, this is one of those things where the more you get exposed to it, the more you'll just be like, ah, oh, yeah, I get it. Like, it makes more sense. So I don't feel like I'm going forward. Yeah. I hope, I hope I have that. I hope, I hope you're good. I feel like, yeah, I don't know. Um, I just personally think that it doesn't help me as much to think of it like a more particle, but I mean, it, it could be. Um, but I, I just feel like it's almost like more difficult at that point. Okay. You also have this one. Okay. Now let's get into the second part, which is going to be um, now like verbs. Just, yep. The second part is going to be more like verbs. So that's why I had this like Timo, like, oh, what's Timo? So basically, um, when you have a te form of something, let me just do this. Okay. Te form. And I mean any te form you know, so any verb te form or any e adjective te form. Like, um, you can have something like, um, well, you wouldn't say like, let me see, um, yeah, isogashi, we had isogashi earlier, isogashikute, isogashikute mo, so that works too. Anything that has a te form, you can add this like, te mo thing. Okay, so you can just add mo after it, and then it has this like, even if kind of thing this even even though even if usage so i'll, I'll show you that so you would just have like te form plus more essentially um but the reason i kind of introduce it together with demo is really it has this similar or almost the same kind of usage as as demo so this is probably something you've yeah so colt mentions it it's probably something you've learned because um like this here i'll actually use that sentence so toide Toide. Well, I guess they would do, um, wait, did I, <laughs> oh yeah, they usually just do toide. Uh, toide ni itte mo. Itte mo. Right, it's just te form plus mo. Ii desu ka? Once again, you have e this ka, just like before. Toire ni itte mo ii desu ka. So now this temo, it's sort of like an even if, even though, or something like that. So even if, even though. So like, even if I go to the toilet, is it okay? E desu ka. Is it okay? Right? Even if this, even if a. So I, I'll, I'll kind of enclose it. Maybe we'll enclose it up to the te. It's a bit awkward here to really draw the boxes, but yeah. So like, even if A, B, and then B here is a question. So here we're asking, even if A, still B? Kind of like that. Yon demo ii desu ka? So it's, the, it's also demo, right? Yeah, so the reason why in, in, in yomu it's yon demo is because the te form of yomu is yon de. So it's, it's the same, it's just te form. So sometimes te form will be te, and then sometimes it will be de, but that just depends on the conjugation. So, the reason why in, in yon demo it's yon demo, because like you would say yon de, you would not say yon te, right? So that's just a conjugation that works like that. Um, so you can do this with any te form, right? And I'll, I'll actually now make an example with um, a one that's that's uh, de. So um, how we could do something like, yeah, I mean, um, for example, actually, I I don't have one with de, but I've just thought of a really cool one with um, a really cool one with te as well. So maybe we could have something like, wow, my, that's a really ugly call. That's better. <laughs> kodomo. Kodomo ga um, naitemo. Uh, nai naku. Naitemo. And then, shikata nai. I'll do a comma. Shikata. Shikata nai desu. Okay, here's the sentence. Kodomo ga naitemo. Even if the child is crying. Um, I think it mentions the even if. She mentions, the, is it okay? Yeah, basically, like, the is it okay part is from e desu ka. E desu ka by itself literally just means, is it okay? Is it good? And the, the temo part gives the qualification, saying that even if 
A is true, is B still good? Right? Even if I do the action of going to the toilet, is that still good? Kind of like that. Um, so you're asking, like, can I do it? Like, is it okay even if I do it? And then here, kodomo ga naite mo shikata nai desu. Even if a child is crying, shikata nai desu. Like, you can't help that. Which could sound a little bit defeatist in the moment, but it could also mean that, well, children will cry sometimes. You can't, like, stop them from ever crying. So you have to deal with it, right? You have to find a way of dealing with that. So this would be like a sentence that when someone says like, ah, oh, like, I don't know, my little nephew always cries. You'd be like, ma, kodomo ga naite mo shikata nai desho. Like, it can't be helped. Children will cry, right? Kind of like that. You often hear sentence ending in demo or temo. It's a, so iwarete mo. Yeah, exactly. Actually, you mentioned a good thing there, which is true for temo or also just te. Um, that never really gets talked about in textbooks because it's really hard to talk about it, which is implied sentence endings or implied clauses. So whenever you have a te form at the end of a sentence, that sentence has an implied clause, which we either don't really care about or we should just kind of... It's more like a feeling thing, like you don't really have to specify what comes after. In your example, so iwaretemo. Even if I'm being told that, Dot, dot, dot. So what, what does the person mean? They mean that like, well, even if you tell me that, like there's no point, for example. So iwaretemo. Like, even if you tell me that, there's nothing I can do, right? So, and you could finish the sentence as well. You could add this implied other clause. So iwaretemo. Dekiru koto nante nan ni mo nai. Even if you tell me this, even if I'm being told this, there is nothing I can do. That was like verbatim, like then the full sentence. Now, what that implied part is, of course, heavily depends on the context of the conversation. But um, yeah, like how things are implied is very tricky because it just happens so that like in Japanese, the way implied information works seems to be, be very different from the way implied information works in English. Now, English can have implied information because I can say like, well, even if you tell me that, right? And then you kind of know what I mean, even though that's not really, I mean, we're still also kind of missing a clause there <laughs> when we say like, even if, usually we lead into another clause, but you still know. But in Japanese, often things are implied in weird ways, especially things like implying the verb is very hard to translate properly because implying the verb is really hard in English because the verb comes really early in the sentence and trying to imply it is really weird, especially if you have things after the verb that you still need to say, like objects. <laughs> Because in, in English, it's often subject, verb, object. But in Japanese, it's usually just subject, object, verb, or object, subject, verb, or something like that. And then sometimes the verb just kind of gets dropped off and implied. But in English, you're like, well, I have to kind of put a verb there. Because if I don't, it's really hard for me to mention the object, right? Um, so yeah, it's just, these are like really tricky things. But you get used to it over time. The, at that point, it's just really important to understand what is being said rather than being able to translate it. So what do you want me to do about it? Like translate Chinese kind of wait, wait, yeah. どうしたらいい? <laughs> so like what are you saying I should do? <laughs> yeah, you could say it in many different ways, I think, yeah. Okay, te form. Um so that's that's one example. Let's do one with an adjective. Um I I used isoga earlier, so let's maybe do isogashi just because that's a word that is already on my mind right now. Isogashi. Isoga. Um, I think. Does I think isogashi has gashi as okurigana? Either it has shi or gashi. <laughs> Let me see. It's up here. I know. I I wrote it earlier, but I forgot again. It's just shi. Okay, good. Good to know. Isogashi. Don't want to mess up. Isogashi. So how was the te form of e adjectives? It's just getting rid of e and replacing with ku te. Kutemo. Isogashikutemo. Um, so like, even if you're busy, so what, what could we do? Isogashikutemo. Even if you're busy, um, I don't know, tetsudatte kudasai, right? Oops. Tetsudatte, and tetsudau, tetsudau is, um, tsutau, tsutau, right? Tetsudatte. Oops. Uh, yeah, okay. Sometimes I need to remind myself. Okay, te tsudatte. Tsudatte. Kudasai.
Even if you're busy, please help me. Yeah, better be at the meeting. Yeah, or something like that, right? Isogashiktemo, eh, to. Isogashiktemo, kaigi kurai wa, chanto, sankashite hoshi. Something like that. I don't know. Even if you're busy, at least to the meeting, I would like you to participate. That would be like one example there. So it works the same with the、uh, e adjectives. Ayumi san, haro, rrrr. And、um, if you paid good attention to what Foliage said earlier, he actually, he or she, I don't want to assume, but what Foliage said earlier was, so iware demo. That's actually a passive form, iwareru, to be told. And passive forms, when we talked about the passive, I mentioned this as well. Passive forms are basically just ichidan verbs as well. Like they, they are conjugation patterns, then function, functionally are exactly the same as ichidan verbs. So we can also just use iwareru and get rid of ru and replace with te because that's the rule for making the te form of an ichidan verb. And then we have the te form of a,、uh, of a passive verb. Right? So that's why I said any te form, any, anything that I called the te form or whatever, like so far, whatever you think you can do that, you're probably able to make this temo form. Temo or demo. Again,、uh, with some verbs, like、uh, Evie mentioned earlier, some verbs it would then be demo.、Uh, hello, Alex. Because, for example, yomu just conjugates like that, right? Like yomu. Yomu.、Uh, blah, 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 blah. Yomu is this guy. Try not to confuse like yomu and hanasu and everything. Yomu, right, would just conjugate to yonde. But that's just because of the verb conjugation pattern. Because、uh, the te form of yomu is nde. Yonde and then mo. Yonde mo. Right, yonde mo. But functionally it's exactly the same. It does exactly the same thing.、Um, because it's simply just te form plus mo. Okay? So that's kind of how you can use.、Um, Verb, temo, or adjective, temo. For、uh, na adjectives, by the way, it's basically the same rules as. as、um, av. It's basically the same rules as nouns for the most part.、Um, like ao demo or whatever, something like that. Because na adjectives, once again, often function kind of like verbs, especially with these kinds of things. So when you can put something after a.、Uh, did I say verb?、Uh, sorry. Let me say that again. I think I said the wrong thing. Uh, let's rewind. Na adjectives most of the time function like nouns. I think I said verbs, that's definitely wrong. Forget that.、Um, na adjectives most of the time function a lot like nouns. So chances are that when you can do something with a noun, you can kind of also do it with a na adjective. So just chug demo right after it and it should generally work. For Japanese, you can just keep conjugating works in place of conversation each down as well. Yeah.、Um, yeah, that's really the, like, the, the powerful thing of it. It's like, I, I like it because it's really, um. So, in te form conjugation, just look up and Tamil Google memorize it. Yeah, definitely. I have done a full, like, one hour lesson just on, like, te form.、Um, actually, I have done multiple lessons on te form because it is so. The cool thing about the te form, in my opinion, is that it is simultaneously really simple, but also extremely. Like, has an extremely wide area of application because it is so simple. Like, the. Root of the te form is simply like in its most, in its most like atomic form, and it's just a conjunctive. It is just a way of letting you like add one verb to another verb, and then sometimes also to add certain particles afterwards. But it's just a conjunctive, it's, it's, like, it's like glue, it just helps you to put things together. But because that is such a Vague or wide usage area, it then gets used in like so many different things. Can't even imagine Japanese without te form. It's so important. It's, yeah, and we've talked about many、um, adverbials, not adverbials, so we've talked about many auxiliaries that rely on the te form as well. Like te iku, te kureru, te morau, all of these things.、Um, that's why it's so important. And, and people tend to be, at first they are like, it's very easy, then they may get confused, and then later they see like how. How useful it is, or, or like how nice it is, I think. That's generally that's how it was for me. So, the last thing I want to talk about is、uh, noni, just because it kind of fits into this, like, even if, even though kind of thing.、Um, so, I'll try and, like, hopefully contrast it properly. So, noni, okay, noni will also be at the end of a clause, so,、um, or only be at the end of a clause.、Um, so, we have, so we do, like, let's say, like, you have end of clause, right? That would usually be a, now, a, a verb or predicate.、Um, end of clause. And then noni, okay? So again, we're looking at、um, a verb or a predicate of some sort, maybe an e adjective. 
isogashii no ni, right? That would be an example. Or taberu no ni would be an example.、Um, any sort of end of a clause and then no ni. Arki, hey, komawa. Okay. And then this often, most of the time, gets translated as sort of a even though. Even though or a、um, despite. <laughs> despite, right? Is it with an with an I or an E? I can never, I never remember if it's, I think it's with an I. Despite. I think I'm right. I think I'm good. Despite? Really? Why? <sighs> Why do you write despite but say despite? English is the worst language. Despite. 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 I, I don't care anymore. In spite of. I should have said in spite of because it's. Wait. It's without. Is it with an E? I'm so confused now. There you go. It's English. Dude. Can also use the interrogation words like. Ah, yeah. Nan. Ah, yeah. Nan demo do demo. Yeah, right. I should have mentioned that as well. So, um. That's true. Demo also very specifically. Can be used、um, with、uh, interrogative words like nani or、um, do or stuff like that. Yeah, or, or doko. So, nan demo, whatever. So, like, so think of it as the even if kind of usage. Like, even if it is anything, like nani means what? So, even if it is what? And then nani is not just what, it also has this sort of any and all kind of notation, or all question words in Japanese do. So, you have to say, like, nan demo is just like, at that point, it's like whatever. Or, do demo, like however, however it is, because do is、um, generally like adverbial, it tells us how something is done. And then,、um, doko demo, wherever, right? So just think of it as that. It preserves the even if and all of its uses. Yeah, it's kind of, it is sort of pretty consistent in that regard. So, at the end of clause, no ni, it's often like despite of or even though. And it's often said to, it's often used to complain. So, like, ah, even though you said you'd be here, right? And I'll maybe just use this、um, sentence, like, let's, even though you said you would be at the meeting, right? So, or participate at the meeting. So, we could say something like,、um, kaigi ni. Kaigi. And gi is gonna be fun. Actually, yeah, it's not too bad. No, wait, that's not gi.、Um, Kaigi is with,、um, right. It's this, and then it has like water below it, right? Hope I didn't add like an extra stroke. The stroke order was kind of messed up there, but don't worry about it. I think I have an extra stroke in here as well, but I also will not worry about that.、Um, I think these two should be like one stroke. Kaigi ni,、um, for example, dete kuru, or yeah, kaigi ni deru. Deru can mean to make an appearance somewhere. To. Itta. No ni. Kaigi ni deru to itta no ni. And then here it's kind of like this dot 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 usage where we could imply it, or we could add a second clause.、Um, and then we could something like, kekkyoku de na katta. Right? Kaigi ni deru to itta. You said that you would appear at the meeting. Right? You said you would appear at the meeting. Kaigi ni deru to itta. You said you would appear at the meeting. No ni. Even though you said you would appear at the meeting. And this is another thing that cannot be mentioned often enough. And it applies to demo, it applies to no ni. Remember that most things in Japanese grammar work backwards. Compared to English, of course. In, in Jap- Like this wouldn't be like. I guess it would still be considered kind of backwards. But yeah. Most things in Japanese grammar. Always affect things in a sort of backwards order. Japanese is backwards. Funny you should say it because that's actually true that when you go from, in- from Japanese to English, sometimes a natural English sentence, and not just natural, but a correct English translation is born when you read a sentence backwards and translate sort of bit by bit as you go backwards through the sentence. It is funny how that happens, but for example, look at simple quotation. To itta. In English, we almost always have to say the quotation first, right? Whereas in Japanese, it comes last. In English, we usually say,、um, you said, and then we move on. Where in Japanese, we say what they said first, and then we say, itta. 
Um, this is Deru. Yes, this is Deru. So Noni is kind of like a particle. Noni works kind of like a particle, yeah. And so does Demo. They all work like particles. They always kind of work backwards. So the clause that Noni affects is always the one before it. So, Kaigi ni deru to itta. You said you would appear at the meeting. Noni. So even though you said you would appear at the meeting, you didn't. That's kind of the implication here. Like, you didn't. Like, even though you said it. So, remember that the difference here is that noni, okay, is at end of is the at the end of a clause, which means that you could not put demo here, right? Demo would not work here because you're not allowed to add demo immediately after a verb and like sentence ending form. What a beautiful evening, <laughs> indeed. So itta past tense, we wouldn't be able to add demo here. Um, and then to compare it with what we learned earlier, what if it was, you might be asking like, but if, what if it was like the same sentence, but we used to ittemo, right? With, our, with what we learned earlier, ittemo. Now the difference here is that, here it's more like saying, well, even if you say that you would appear at the meeting, so you can see kind of the difference, right? Itta no ni is a past tense, so even though you did say that, but when you say kaigi ni deru to ittemo, that sounds more like it's a future thing, like even if you tell me that, even if you say that you will attend the meeting, I don't believe you. That would be then a usage of, of ittemo, right? Versus uh, kseni. Yeah, kseni is also common um, as a replacement for noni, but then, like you said, um, is very extreme, it's like you're very annoyed then. It's like despite of yourself, you're really being very spiteful at that point. So yeah, it's true. That's kind of how noni is used. So whenever you're like, often it is said when something goes, when when you don't expect someone to actually do something or you're disappointed. Disappointment is a good one. Like noni is often used to express disappointment. Like, kyo aeru to omotta no ni. Like even though I thought we'd be able to meet today. Kyo aeru, be able to meet today. To omotta, I thought, no ni. Often also with past tense. Um, you don't have to use it with a past tense. You can also say something like, um, you can also say something like, I don't know, like, taberu no ni. Um, Kekyoku wa zenbu taberu no ni. I don't know, something like that. In the end, you always end up eating everything, right? That's kind of like more of a, a future slash non past form. So it doesn't have to be past tense. It's just, it needs to be at the end of a clause somewhere. Um, you can also do it with, um... oh, another important thing. I said end of a clause. Now, a specific use case where you have to sort of add another thing is when you have nouns or not adjectives. Um, when you have nouns or not adjectives, we have to resort to our old friend, na, okay? So it's nanoni, nanoni, and also nanoni. Okay, that's the difference here. For nouns and na adjectives, you have to employ our old friend na, which then just functions as a, a conjunctive copula again. Tell me that unless I believe you. Even though you're telling me you'll be there, I still don't believe you. Yeah, exactly, that would be like the temo, right? Kaigi ni deru to ittemo. Even if you say you will appear. It's very for this one. Yeah, it's another thing that annoying about Japanese. Yeah, so, but once again, it kind of makes sense. If you remember the like, end of a clause, um, I'll give you an example, right? This, okay, this is why I said end of a clause. This, oops, this in Japanese, not a clause, okay? This, a clause, kind of, okay? Often the copula is implied, but strictly grammatically speaking, without the copula, a noun doesn't constitute a clause, but a noun plus the copula does constitute a clause. Same goes for like na adjectives. For example, um, sure, all no need to, but meaning changes. Uh, no de. Yeah, most of this, uh, the grammatical sort of like where you can't put it uh, applies to the same thing. Um, for na adjectives, um, so you have to remember which one you can add no, right? Yes. Theoretically. Um, no, yeah, so no, yeah, you could say that, yeah, no functions like a noun a lot of the time. Not all usages of no are like, like nouns, but in this case, yes. It's kind of like a substitute noun or nominalizer that gets added at the end of a predicate. So we kind of need a predicate to be there. Because also think about it like this. If we didn't have the nine here, it would kind of be the usage of noun, no, and we would expect another noun to follow. Right? So then it, it would like turn into a different grammar that wouldn't make sense anymore. Kind of like that.
I'm trying to like um, right now I'm drawing a blank on like a, a, a proper um, no adjective that I could use I'll probably go with uh, owl right yeah let's go with owl owl is fine owl nanoni right we would use um owl nanoni so owl is not a clause owl dot is a clause right so then instead of dot we would use na and then we would add noni nanoni So one thing, which is the last thing that I'll mention, is that sometimes you will say, uh, sometimes you will see noni at the exact same place that it is here, but it's not even though. So now that the sentence does a now that the sentence end imply a no, no. Wait, I'm not sure I understand the question. Um, no kind of substitutes a noun at the end of a clause. Um, because remember that this form here in Japanese, a very intrinsic form. I'll just delete this real quick. Remember that in Japanese, very intrinsic form that you see a lot is the attributive usage, which is verb noun. Okay, verb noun. And when you have verb plus no, that's kind of down the same lane. So yeah, also again, the no doesn't always have to be finished. That is true, yeah. Of course, it doesn't always have to be. Um... Kimi no datanda. Yeah, exactly. That would be one of those examples. Kimi no pen. And then you would just sort of imply the second noun at the second time around. Or, or like when it's already clear. Um, you will sometimes see verb, noni, and then something else. So, um, and it will not mean, okay, even though. And let me explain why. The reason why you would ever see this, and it would not mean even though, is that no, verb no is also simply a means to nominalize a clause. Um, yeah, so that one is can be really tricky. So if we, strictly speaking, don't want to have this noni even though usage, but we nominalize a clause, and then we use the ni particle because it's just natural to use, then that's kind of what you end up with. And I would think of it as like a very much split case of no, and then just ni, because ni just happens to be the particle you use. So an example of that would be like, ryori suru no ni tsukatta. Ryori suru no ni tsukatta eto zairyo, right? Ryori suru means to cook. So let me, um, let me just do, right, ryori like this. Um, ryori. Ryori uh, is ri with, yeah, ri is with the tama. Ryori suru no ni. Suru. No. Here, we are basically using no as a nominalizer. And then the ni is just here because ni tsukau. Nani ka, nani ka o nani ka ni tsukau is sort of to use something as something or for something else. So, ryori suru no ni tsukatta. So, for the sake of cooking, um, tsukau, which I think is this boy, yeah, exactly. Tsukatta, and then, um, zairyo. Zairyo being uh, ingredients. Uh, yomu no ni sanbun gurai ika ga, eh, to, ika katta. Sanbun kurai kakatta. Ah, san, ah, san, san fun kurai. Okay, cool. Sorry. I, that took me a second. I think that, well, because of the typo. <laughs> uh, aruku no daisuki. Probably just say a bit later. Got confused since that thought of, you said, no would be implied when adding, when ending a sentence with a noun. No, that's, I'm sorry. I don't think I said that. I hope I didn't. Um, where am I? Oh, that's where I wanted to type. Right. It's got the... Oops. Oh, Jesus Christ. No. <laughs> I don't know how I did that. That was interesting. Excuse me. Um, zairyo. So, zairyo is just like this. Um, zairyo, which is again, ryo. So here, we're just saying the ingredients, the zairyo, the ingredients that I used for cooking, right? So, it's not even really a grammar point for noni, but rather a different grammar point that will also end up looking the same in a specific case. Yeah! 
If you want, yeah. I would think that, like, the easiest way of keeping those two apart in my head is that I think of Noni, even though, as a very, like, fixed sort of unit thing. So I, I really consider this to be, and, like, whether it is grammatically speaking or not, it's whatever, but I really consider this to be very enclosed as a unit, whereas this usage of Noni, I treat in my head as simply using no for one purpose and ni for another but like sure it's a kind of like kind of arbitrary but it's just a way of keeping them apart so when because at the end of the day in noni even though the no also kind of works as a nominalizer and then the ni i don't know it's just kind of there but it's easiest in my opinion to think of like noni used as a unit to mean even though, despite, but then sometimes you would have to use no, and afterwards you just happen to use ni, and then it meaning sort of like nominalized clause that also happens to be some sort of indirect object which then needs to be used with ni, kinda. That's sort of the difference. Um, so you and you just have to be able to kind of tell because in this sentence ryori suru no ni tsukatta zairyo it does not make sense for it to be even though ryori suru no ni tsukatta zairyo even though i cooked i used ingredients that just doesn't really make sense right so it's one of those cases where if things don't make sense try a different approach so but i really wanted to mention it because it's very confusing this one's really confusing but you'll see both and you will eventually get used to it hopefully uh -huh. hmm. <sighs> So, one more time. I thought Eve said no would be implied when ending a sentence with a noun. No, I said the copula would be implied. I think that's what I said. Um, I think what you heard was, um, I think the time I said something like that was that I said that, at least that's what I remember. I said that any noun is not a sentence. Like, for example, I said, uh, specifically I said, sora, sora is not a sentence, but sora da is a sentence or a clause. Um, sora not a sentence, sora da is a clause. Or sora not a clause, sora da is a clause. But I said that sometimes the copula is implied. Like sometimes you don't write it, but it's still kind of implied. Could you repeat the English meaning of the sentence for me? Yes. So, um, ryori suru no ni tsukatta zairyo. The ingredients I used for cooking. The ingredients I used for cooking. So when you say, X ni tsukatta something, something that I used for something else. So, ryori suru no ni tsukatta zairyo, the ingredients that I used for cooking. Note that theoretically that's not really a finished sentence, it's like what we would call maybe a noun phrase, because I ended in a noun. So, you can do this, it's fine. We do this in English too. Like, in English you would often have like, yeah, the trees standing in the hills, I guess. That would be a sentence, I suppose. It's a bit weird, but theoretically, there's kind of like a copula missing. But you could also just argue it's an implied copula. But this is really, this is really nitpicky. Um, Dairyo ingredients. Yes. N3. Yes, yes. So, um, but yeah. Ryori suru no Wow. Ryori suru no ni tsukatta zairyo. The ingredients that I used to cook. But I'll look into it afterwards. Don't worry about it. Yeah, I hope I didn't say anything confusing. But if I did, then you know where you can hold me accountable? You can hold me accountable on our Discord server. Wow, what a brilliant transition, Eve. I'm always so proud of my smooth-ass transitions. And not just that, you will also meet up there in a bit to do our reading session. So do you have any... Okay, any more specific questions about either Demo, Temo, or Noni? Because if not, then we will move on. And um, today, I think we're just gonna just gonna read some like articles, probably. Either, I'm, I haven't like fully decided, but I'm either um, smooth. I know, right? Smooth like a monk's head. Either we're gonna read like an article on NHK Easy or just straight up NHK. I'm not quite sure. These straight up NHK ones can be a bit tricky with vocab, though. Even though they're not super difficult, I wouldn't say. But yeah, we'll see how it goes. So. That was that. Took me about an hour, right? Yeah, I've been recording for almost exactly an hour. That's perfect. That's the time frame that I'm aiming for. So, thank you very much. I'll end the recording here. And I hope you learned something. And I hope you have 
if not a better, at least a wider <laughs> understanding of uh, Demo Temo and uh, Noni. These things are tricky. Um, I will link to this website again, especially because um, it has a million example sentences and will probably help you understand the details of what I said today, maybe a little bit more because um, it's just not possible for me to fit all of these examples into an hour. So I just wanted to talk about sort of each usage. And I, there's still some that I haven't really mentioned. I've mentioned most of them. Yeah, I have most of them. But I think one that we didn't really talk about is like demo demo like twice. So that one's on there as well. Um, do you have any good research for reading Japanese like articles to haven't learned? Um, yeah, we can talk about that in a bit. Hey, Cisco. So thank you very much.